All right, welcome to part three of the portal tutorial. So let's go to our portal component here, and then let's go into the spawn portal along vector function. And as you can see, our try add portal function now returns to us the new portal that's spawned. So let's go ahead and right click on this guy and promote to a local variable. And then I'm gonna call it the new portal. And what we wanna do here is we first wanna make sure that this new portal that was spawned um, is actually valid because it could have not spawned something if there was no more room on the wall. So we'll say is valid. And then if it is valid, then what we wanna do is we want to assign this newly spawned portal or we wanna tell this new portal that it's linked to the other portal in the world, if there is one. So we're gonna make a little function to handle that. So hit this little plus button here and we're gonna call this function swap portals. Now the reason I'm calling it swap portals is because let's say you already have two portals, a purple and a yellow, and then you spawn a new purple one, it's going to swap the old purple portal for the new purple portal. So that's why we're calling it swap portal. <laughs> and so for this guy, we want this to take in a portal. So hit this plus button and let's have it take in a BP portal. And we wanna take it in by reference. So if you don't know what this does, well, first of all, you can see when I click it, it changes the little circle node here to a diamond. And also what it does is it actually takes it in by reference. So if you don't know what a reference is, um, well, normally by default, um, variables are passed as a copy, but if you tell it to pass it in by reference, then this variable is actually this exact same variable that you would pass into it out here. So when we pass this variable in this new portal, which we're about to do, um, this is going to be the exact same variable. So if we, if we were to set this variable to something, it's actually gonna be setting the same one out here because it's a direct reference to it. Um, so anyways, we wanna call this portal, and I'll explain why we're doing it as a reference in a second here. And then the next one we wanna add is also a portal and we'll call this the new portal. And then for this one, we don't need it to be a reference so we can unselect that. So we should have the top one called portal and the bottom one called new portal. So portal is really the old portal. So maybe we should call this, oops, where did that go? Uh, oops, okay. Maybe we should call this one old portal just for clarity. So what we wanna do first of all, is we wanna check if the old portal is valid. So let's drag this guy in and we'll say is valid. And if it is valid, then we want to destroy it. So drag off this guy and say destroy actor, like so. And then after we do that, we wanna set our old portal reference to the new one. So to do that, we can just drag off this guy and say there's a function called set object. Or what's it called? Set by reference. Yeah, set by reference. And this is why we're passing it in as a reference because it was, if it wasn't a reference and we were to set it to something, um, it would just set it locally inside of this function and it wouldn't actually affect the variable that's getting passed in. So whenever you want to set a reference to, func to something, there's a handy little function here to do that. And then of course the value we're setting it to is the new portal, like so. And then we actually need to hook this guy up. So I'm just gonna add a little sequence here. So we can do this part first and that part second. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and swap out our portals. So it's gonna destroy the old one if it exists, and then it's gonna set the old one to whatever the new one is as a reference. So back in our spawn portal along vector function, we can then call our spawn portal or swap portals function. And we can actually make this one private, which I forgot to do. So make that one private, drag this guy over, hook that up. So the new portal is obviously gonna be our new portal, which is that local variable we just created. And then the old portal is either gonna be um, the purple portal, which is A, or the yellow portal, which is B. So we wanna keep track of those two variables inside of our portal component. So over here under our variables, let's add portal A and we'll make this a 
portal object reference, like so, and duplicate this guy, call him portal B, and these can both be private. And then what we want to say here is drag in, drag in portal A, and then drag in portal B, and then right click and get portal A, which is our Boolean that gets passed into this function. And we want to do a select like so. And so if it's true, we obviously want to do portal A. And if it's false, we want to do portal B. Let me actually rearrange these like so. And then that is going to go into our old portal like so. All right, and then now that we have that, um, so this is just switching the references here. So now we actually want to link them together. So drag in the portal A and say git, and drag in the portal B and say git, because we're gonna do it for each of these. And then since we're gonna do it for each of these, let's just do a sequence node here. So hold down S and left click, create a sequence. So we wanna check for each of these. Um, we wanna first make sure it's valid. So right click, convert to validated git. And if it's valid, then we wanna call a function off this and basically tell it, hey, link yourself to the other, the other portal. So I think we need to go inside of our portal real quick and just write that function. So, and we'll do it for this one too real quick, just so it looks nice when we come back. Okay, so let's go into the portal and write a function so that we can link these two portals together. So open up BP portal. And then on the left here, let's make a function. And we'll call this link portal, or I guess link portals maybe. And then this guy needs to take in another portal for the one that's going to be linked to it. So click on this guy, add an input parameter of type portal, and then we'll call it just portal. And so we wanna take this portal that they're providing to us and we wanna make it a variable so that we can store it. So promote to variable, Oh, what? That did not work. Uh, wait a minute, delete that. What just happened there? Let me try that again. Right click, promote to variable. Why is it, why is it doing this weird target thing? Well, I'm not sure why it's not letting me promote it to a variable like that. Um, so let's just make it ourselves. So we'll just say variable and we'll call this linked portal and make sure you set the type of it to be bp portal over here bp portal and we can make this guy private and then we should be able to just drag this in and say set and hook that up okay so that worked i don't know why it wasn't working before and then we want to drag off of this and check if it is valid so if it is valid then we want to set the material of our portal mesh to be the render target of what the other portal's rendering. So to do that, we can grab our portal A Boolean and we'll do a select node on it. This one down here. And like I said, we wanna set the material of our portal mesh. So drag our portal mesh and say set material and hook that up and hook that up like so. And then if it is portal A, then we actually want to select the mi underscore portal render target B. So we want to select the opposite, right? So for portal A, we want to select render target B. And for portal B, we want to select render target A. So make sure you do this. Otherwise, your portals won't be rendering the correct thing. So I'm going to select uh, target, render target B for true and render target A for false, so they're flip basically, because they wanna render the, what the other portal's seeing, not what they're seeing. And then if it's false, or if it's, if it's not valid, then we just wanna set the material back to that black color. So I'm just gonna copy these two nodes over here, hook it up to the false, and then we'll search for our mi underscore, what do we call it? Do we call it dark gray? Yeah, dark gray, compile and save. All right, so now we have a nice little function for linking our portals together. So if we go back to our, um, where was that? The portal component. 
we can finish writing this function here. Let me get back to it on my other screen as well. Okay, so drag off of this guy and say link portals. And since we are on portal A, we want to look, link it to portal B. So we'll hook up portal B. And then for this one, we want to do the opposite. So we're going to link it to A. So link B to A, just like that. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and run this now and see what it looks like. So we shoot the wall and we shoot the wall. Okay, so you can see we kind of have something going on here. It obviously doesn't look correct yet. Um, but just to kind of test this to make sure we're on the right page here, let's just take a little box and put it over here on the right side of the wall, just so we can make sure this part's working. And so we'll shoot one over here on the left and one on the right. So you can see if we look through the left one, although it's kind of messed up right now, um, you can see we can see this box. So that box is this box and we can see it because it's looking through this purple portal, but it's not quite right yet. Um, and the reason it's not right quite yet is because, well, currently the only thing we're doing to attempt to get the portals to render correctly is inside of the material. Remember we had, let me find this, because I told you guys I would show you why we're doing this. So if you open up the M portal render targets, so this node here is doing a lot of stuff. So if we, un if we unhook this and apply and save, you can see what it would look like if we didn't have that. So if I do one here and one here, you can see now it just looks like, almost like a painting, right? It's literally just an image. It doesn't matter how we view it. It always looks the same. Um, and so this is what it looks like if we don't do any type of math to move the cameras around inside the portals based on where we're looking. And so this step inside the material, it's like kind of the first step in making that look correct where it kind of scales the image so that it's the correct size based on the screen. So now if we apply and we run this again, you can see it's a, it's a little close to what we want. Like, especially if we get really close to it, this looks almost correct. But as we get further away, like we should be able to see different things depending on how we look through this portal. And currently we can't, but that's basically what it should look like right now. And so now we just need to write the math to make it, um, to make the camera inside the portal rotate based on where we are. So let's see. So let's go to our portal because we need to do this inside the tick because this needs to happen every frame basically. So let's see, let me go to my other project and then let's go to the event tick. Uh, and we can delete the begin play because we don't need this. So let's see, let's see. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna um, check if our linked portal is valid. So let's drag this guy in and say get and convert to validated get. Because if the linked portal is not valid, meaning there's only one portal in the game, like there's no point to do any of this stuff because it's just gonna show black anyways. So we just wanna say, make sure the linked portal is valid before we actually try to do anything. And then we're gonna do two things. So let's add a sequence node here. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to move our camera to be in the correct spot. So what I mean by that is, I'll try to show you as we go along, but if you look at the portal, so it has this camera here, right? So this camera needs to render the scene correctly and this camera's rotation and lo his, its rotation and its lo location are gonna change based on where the player is. So for example, uh, if I run this and I'm over here and I'm looking through this left, actually, let me, let me do it this way so I can check. So if I'm over here, oh, actually, let me show you my other project because that'll, like, that'll make a whole lot more sense because you can actually see it. All right, so if I put one portal here and one portal here, so they're both they're on either side of me, basically, and I go up and I walk to this portal and I look directly at it. So I'm going to eject here. And then let's take a look at the rotation of this camera relative to the portal. So you can see the the Rotation is that it's looking directly at the portal. So this red axis, which is the forward vector, is looking directly towards the portal. And you'll also notice that the camera is, you know, like a couple meters away from the portal. Now, if we go and we look at the other portal, which it's linked to, and we look at its scene 
capture, you'll notice that it's actually back behind the portal the same distance that our player is away from his portal, and it's rotated in the same direction. So like this, the X is facing forward. And so likewise, if we were to take our player and rotate him 90 degrees to the left and eject, you'll see now his X is facing to the left. And if we were to view this from the scene capture, as if it was behind here, you can see that his X is also facing to the left. So what's happening is that it's putting this capture or this camera, which I know you can't see the camera because it's hidden, but you can see which way it's facing. It's making sure that the camera for the portal that we're linked to has the same relative location and rotation as the player does for the portal that this portal is linked to. So hopefully that makes sense. So as you can see, as I get further away from this portal, this camera that's attached to this guy also gets further away. And that's part of how it gives you this effect that it's as if it's just like a window that you're looking through. So that's sort of what we're about to do here. Hopefully that makes sense to some degree. All right, so let me open up my portal again and go back to the event graph. So like I said, the first thing I want to do is update the location and rotation of that other portal's camera. So ultimately what we want to do here is grab our linked portal and we want to grab his scene capture, which is the camera basically for that portal. Hit scene capture. And we want to call set relative location and rotation. Because again, we want the linked portal's camera, or we want its relative location and rotation to match the lo relative location and rotation of our player's camera relative to the other portal. So we're ultimately going to be calling this. And now we just need to calculate the location and the rotation. So to do that, um, we want to get the player's camera manager. So we'll say get player camera manager. And we want to get the camera transform for the player. So we can just say, uh, what is it called? Transform component. And we want to get the world transform of that. And we want to get the player's camera transform relative to our portal. So there's one little thing I did that made this a lot easier. So actually we're gonna to go to the viewport real quick. And because the portals, um, or because the camera is facing the opposite way of the portal, like normally the player is standing over here to the right looking towards the portal, but this camera is actually facing in the opposite direction that the player would be looking. So I couldn't quite figure out how to do the math to rotate um, this transform around. So what I ended up doing is just very simply, I just added a scene component up here, and then I just rotated it so that it was 180 degrees backwards, just so I would have a starting transform to work with that matched how the player would be looking. And then I just called it um, back facing scene. And so now that we have that, um, we go back to the event graph. So to get the player's camera relative to this um, this portal, we want to grab this back facing scene and say get world transform. And then we want to use a function called convert uh, transform to relative. So this is going to convert the player's camera transform relative to this back facing scene. And then that is going to give us our new location and rotation for where our linked portals camera should be. So if we split this guy, we can hook that up to location and rotation, and we should be good. So now if we run this and take a look at what happens here, um, put this guy here and this guy here, and you can see it looks pretty good here from close, but if we get further away, you can see something weird is happening. So what's actually happening here is the camera, if you imagine, actually I can just show you if I run it this way. This took me a while to figure out. So this looks correct um, for the most part, but if I back up, you can see something weird happens, something like kind of 
gets in the way of the view. And if we look at where the camera is, so I'm going to eject. So we got our, oh, actually, let me turn on the player's camera so you can see this. I forgot to do that. So let's click on the first person camera and let's turn off um, camera mesh hidden. So that way we can actually see the camera like we could do in my other project because it's going to make it a lot more easy to visualize what's going on. So click there, click there. And then if I press F8, I can eject. So we have our player looking at this yellow one. So let's look at where this portal's camera is. You can see the portal's camera is back, all the way back here. So what's happening is that the camera, if you imagine it looking in this direction, it's actually seeing this box, which we don't want, right? Because the portal, it shouldn't be able to see that box because that's not that box is technically not in the way. But since this camera is all the way back here, it's actually seeing things that are behind the wall. Um, and this box just happens to be here so it can see the box. So in order to fix that, what I ended up doing is modifying the near clipping plane of this portal's camera to be whatever the distance is of our player to this portal. So if you imagine if our player to this portal is, let's just say 100 units for simplicity sakes, if it's 100 units away, then I'm setting this camera's near clipping plane to 100 units, so that way it only starts rendering things once it gets, or it only starts rendering things that are 100 units away from the camera. And so this, this box would be like 50 units, so it wouldn't even try to render it. So that's the next step. So let's go back to our portal. And we want to say, uh, or first of all, I want to get the distance between the player and the portal that he's looking through. So again, let's just drag, or let's just get this guy again the player camera manager and his transform component. And we want to say get world location. And we want to get the distance as a vector or distance between or the distance vector one, this one. <laughs> um, and the vector two is going to be the get actor location, which is the portal's location. So again, this is the distance between the player's camera and the portal that the player is looking through. And we want to, we're going to actually add, um, we're going to add one to this. And the reason we're doing that is so there's a little tiny bit of leeway um, between the near clipping plane and where the portal is. And I just found that it looks better and gets rid of little tiny visual artifacts if you add just another little unit here. So we're just going to add a unit. And then that's going to be our new custom clipping plane for the linked portals scene capture so we want to use or we want to grab our linked portal scene capture again so drag this guy in and say get scene capture which again is just the camera and you can say set custom near clipping plane and we want to hook this guy up to there and this guy up to there like so so it should look like this get players camera manager get the location of his transform component Get the distance between that location and the location of ourselves which is the portal and then we just add one to it and then we will set the custom near clipping plane of our linked portal scene component to that value so if you run this now it actually isn't quite going to work you'll see it still does the same thing we still see that box and the reason for that is if you hover over this it says um the set b override custom near clipping plane to true if you want to use a custom clipping plane so we need to click on our scene capture over here and search for custom and you'll see it pops up as custom near clipping plane. So this needs to get set to true. You can just leave this empty because we're overriding it right here, but it's important that this gets set to true and then we'll actually use this value. So now if we play this, and we look through our portal you can see even when we back up really far we never actually see that other box because it's not rendering anything um, until it actually gets to where the portal starts so that looks correct and you can see we can walk around and look left and right and we can see through this portal if we jump we can look down and same with this one so now we can see this box from this angle so everything seems to be working pretty well um, so one thing we're going to need to fix here, uh, you'll notice, maybe you can't really tell yet. Um, well, let's let's change a few settings. So one thing you might notice is it looks a little blurry. 
So by default, Unreal has motion blur enabled. And we just want to turn that off because it's going to make it look a lot nicer, I found. So if you go to project settings and you search for motion blur, we can turn that guy off. And then you also want to, while we're here, if you search for near clip plane, we also want to set this down pretty low. So 0 0.0001 is probably a good value. And the reason we're setting this low is once we get to the point where we start walking through the portals, we want our near clipping plane for our camera to be very low. So that way it doesn't start clipping out the portal that's right in front of our faces. Because at some point when we start walking through it, we're going to get really, really, really close to that portal. And we want to still be able to see it. We don't want it to clip out. So we're going to set that down really low. And then I think for that one to take effect, you're going to need to restart the engine um, for the near clip plane to take effect. But we're going to restart it here in a second anyways when we set up the C++ side, which again is going to be very, very minor. But So we don't need to reset it quite yet. But you'll notice now that we turned off motion blur, it looks a lot smoother. Um, but you can see some visual artifacts, especially like here. You can see the ground there. When I look up, it's like uh, it's kind of messed up. The reason that's happening is because, um, well, it's the same. It's the same thing that's causing this to look a little stretched right now. Because if you remember from the very beginning, we set our render targets to a hard coded 1920 by 1080. Um, and if we actually run it in a new editor window, which my monitor is pretty close to 1920 by 1080, I think, and we look at it, it actually makes the problem a lot uh, closer to being resolved. But it's still not perfect. And you'll notice, like, if I were to take the window and kind of drag it to be skewed quite a bit, you'll notice it really looks messed up through the portal. Like here, box looks like pretty perfectly square, but through the portals, it doesn't look correct at all. And so the reason for that is because we're still using that 1920 by 1080 resolution for our render target, when in reality, we wanna match whatever the resolution of the window is. So that's what we need to do a little bit of C++ for. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. It's going to be really, really straightforward. Um, we just need access to a function inside of the render target, which we don't have access to in Blueprints. For whatever reason, they just decided not to expose it. So we're going to make a C++ function library, just like this one, but in C++. And we're just going to write a really simple function. I'll just show it to you real quick so you're not too freaked out. Um, it's just going to look like this. And it's going to be called resize render target. And it's going to take in the render target, the new size for the X and the Y. And it's just going to call resize target on the render target. So to do that, um, hopefully you already have like Visual Studio or Rider or some sort of IDE set up for C++. If you don't already have that set up, um, I have a tutorial on my channel for how to set up like an IDE with Unreal if you're totally new to using C++ for the first time. Because you need to install Visual Studios or some sort of IDE to actually type the code in. So I'll try to remember to link that in the description if you need to go set that up first. But assuming you have that set up, all you need to do is come up here to Tools and New C++ Class. I believe if you're in Unreal Engine 4, this is under like File, New C++ Class, but they moved it over here. So New C++ Class, and for the type, I think if you scroll down to the bottom, yeah, there's Blueprint Function Library. Just go ahead and select this guy, hit Next, and then you can call it whatever you want. Um, I think I called my portal function library and go ahead and create the class. If you don't know what a function library is, it's basically just a collection of functions that can be accessed from anywhere. Um, so it's a good place to just throw in like random functions that you're gonna need to be accessing in multiple places. If you're really making this project like on a real, real team or something like I would probably put this function inside of my portal class because I'd probably have my portal class be C++ based. But since I don't want to go through all of that effort of making a portal that's in C++, we're just going to put it in a function library to keep things nice and nice and simple. So you can see it's compiling the C++ code. And as soon as it's done, I will explain what to do next. All right, so as you can see, it has launched Visual Studio. So we still have the project running in the background here, but now we have Visual Studio running. Uh, don't be confused, I have two of them. This is the, the uh, example that I showed at the beginning, so that's why I have two. But So yours should look exactly like this, and you should have a portal function.h and a portal function library.cpp. And you can also see these files over here on the left. So these two guys are here. 
So these are the ones we're going to be filling out. Again, it's going to be super simple. We just want to add one function to be able to resize the render targets. So in order to be able to call this function in blueprints, we need to add the u function macro above it. And then we need to add the blue print callable tag to the top. And then we can also add it to a category of the portal function library like so. And then to make a function inside of a function library, it needs to be static, so that way it can be accessed from anywhere. And for this one, we don't need it to return anything, so we're just gonna say void for the return type. And then for the name of it, we're gonna call it resize uh, render target. And then this needs to take in a u texture render target 2D, and it's gonna be a pointer to it. And we'll just call this render underscore target. And then it also needs to take in a float size underscore x and a float size underscore y. And then we also want to make sure that we make this public. So we'll say public and then a colon, just like that. And there we go. So this is what it should look like. Um, I don't know if we need to include this or not. I guess it will tell us an error if it needs to. Um, so that's our dot h. And then our dot cp, dot cpp, we just want to define this function. So if you just copy this guy and then go to the CPP, we can then paste it. Now for the CPP, we don't need the static keyword, so we can get rid of that. And then in front of this, we just wanna type the name of our class. So you portal function library, colon, colon, to scope it in. And then very important, we wanna get rid of the semicolon at the end here. So delete the semicolon and then open and close curly braces. All right. So we just want to first make sure our render target is valid. So we'll say if render target equals equals no pointer, then just go ahead and return because there's nothing to do. And then otherwise we want to actually resize it. So we're going to say render underscore target and then an arrow. And then it looks like we're going to have to include this, but the name of the function is just called resize target and it takes in the x and the y, so we'll pass in our size x and our size y, oops, size y, just like so. So if you look at this error, it's just saying pointer to incomplete class is not allowed. So that's just because we need to include the render target. So up here, we'll just say pound include, and then the path is engine forward slash texture render target 2d dot h. And there we go. So at this point, we should be able to compile this thing. So if we save this, and then let's go back to our uh, Unreal Engine project, and let's hit File and Save All, because we're about to close this, and we're gonna relaunch it through Visual Studio. So once you have everything saved, go ahead and close it. And then over here in Visual Studio, we're gonna switch this to Debug Game Editor, just in case we need to debug it. And then as soon as that switches, we will press this little green button up here to launch it. And then we just need to wait for Unreal to launch. All right, so now Unreal has launched, um, but now it is being launched through Visual Studios. So if you look at your v Visual Studio, you should see um, the top of it should look like this if you're using Visual Studio. So you just have a stop button and all that stuff. So this means it's running and it is actually running your version of Unreal. So back over here, we should have access to that function now. So we wanna do that inside of the portals tick, uh, right where we were doing the other stuff. So go back to our uh, BP portal and back here in our event graph. So before we do all of this stuff, um, right before this sequence here, let's, or I guess we can do it after the sequence maybe, yeah. So after the sequence, we want to call this resize render target. So let's make sure we can see this function we just wrote. So right click and search for resize render target. <clears throat> and you can see here it is under our portal function library. So we can click on this guy. And all we need to do is provide it with the render target and the new size X and Y that we want. So for the render target, it's going to be our scene capture get texture target 
like so. And let's just hook this guy up like that. And for the X and the Y, it's going to be based on our viewport size. So we can just right click and say, get viewport size. And we can split this guy. Now we could just drag X into X and Y into Y. And that would work out fine. In fact, let's just do that here so I can show you. So drag these guys in, come back and let's hit play. So we still have it at this weird size, which is actually good for testing. So as we look through the portal, you can see the cube looks just like it does in the normal scene. And that's because we are now updating the size of the render target whenever the viewport changes. And you might be worried like that we're doing this inside of a tick and that it's just constantly resizing this texture, but it actually doesn't. Um, if you actually look at the resize target function in C++, so this is inside the engine. Um, it's, it's immediately checking. The first thing it does, the very first thing it does is make sure that the uh, size is actually different. So if it's the same size, every frame that's getting passed in, it doesn't actually do anything. It just fails out early. And so there's really no cost to calling this every frame. But anyways, we can, uh, we can try resizing this window and you can see once you resize it, the things, everything still looks correct. And we don't also, we don't get that weird issue of like being able to see through the ground. So now our portal rendering is pretty good. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out here is you might want to give the option or you might want to have the option of lowering the resolution of the portals because portal rendering can actually be kind of expensive because you're really re-rendering the scene two more times, one for each portal. So if you want to lower the resolution of these portals, you can do that quite, quite easily um, by just dividing this by some constant number. So we can say, actually let's just, let's multiply it by a decimal not by pi. Uh, let's see, multiply. So let's do a multiply node on each one of these, like this. So one for the X and one for the Y. And then whatever number you put here, um, so let's just right click on this and promote it to a variable. And we're gonna call this the uh, portal quality. So since we're multiplying it, uh, the higher number we put here, the higher quality it's gonna be. So if we put one here, oops, actually make sure this goes down here as well. Uh, make sure you have it hooked up to both. So if we put a one here, it's gonna look exactly like we did before because we're just multiplying the viewport size by one. But if we put it down to like 0 0.25, it's going to reduce the quality to 25% quality. So if we play this now and we look through the portals, you can see the quality is gonna be a lot lower. We get some weird issues with the, with the shadows. So maybe this is too low, but this is a lot more optimized and it's a lot more easier for the computer to handle because the textures are so much smaller. So you might want to settle on something like 0 0.6, something that still looks pretty good, but you know you don't necessarily need like full maximum quality for your portals. Unless that's something you're going for, then you can bump it up to one or even two if you're feeling crazy. But I recommend something around 60%. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do that. And then the, let's see here. Um, okay, so actually I think we are, I think we are good. Let me try a few more orientations of this wall real quick, just to make sure. Oh no, why is this happening? See, I had this issue in my other project where at some point it stopped letting me drag things. Like I can't move things. I don't know if you guys have this problem, but I think it has something to do with Unreal Engine 5 and using Visual Studio. But anyways, um, I guess I can just manually add a new wall. I don't know. All right, well, I just edited the part out where I added this other wall. I don't know why it doesn't let me drag things around when I run it in Visual Studio. If you guys also have that issue, I'd be interested in knowing about it, but I'm pretty sure it just has something to do with my version of Unreal at the moment, or maybe it's just a bug on my computer. I don't know why this is happening, but I just manually typed in the coordinates and added a new wall just so we could test this. Ho hopefully you guys are not also having this weird problem. But anyways, we can spawn portals and you can see portals look uh, correct. So we can see each portal through itself. And you notice it's not like an infinite mirror um, effect. It shows black inside of the portal for the second time. It doesn't try to re-render it again but it should work nicely. And when you spawn a new portal, it should delete the old portal um, like so. So make sure this is all looking good and correct for you. And at this point we can go ahead and set up the 
um, the teleporting through the portals. So the teleporting will be the very last part of this tutorial. So I'll see you guys in part four.